ओके वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट चैप्टर नंबर फोर एंड दिस चैप्टर इज अबाउट द नेटवर्क क्लियर एंड दिस चैप्टर वी विल डिस्कस द डेटा प्लेन ओके दिस इज द ओवरव्यू ऑफ ओवरव्यू ऑफ चैप्टर नंबर फोर so we are going to discuss uh, the data plane an overview of data plane in control plane and the rest of the topics okay so now let's start it that what is the uh, uh, what is the network layer basically network layer it transport segment from sending to receiving host that is its functionality is to move the data from source machine or this from source machine to the destination machine okay so it basically move the data from source machine to destination machine okay so when the this data is to be moved from source machine to destination machine so first you know that there are multiple routes available this is also one route and this is also one route so the first functionality is to compute the best route okay to compute the best route from source machine to destination machine this is called routing and we will discuss it and after computing the best route then the data is moved on okay this is called forwarding okay so basically the network layer it functionality is to transport the packet the segment from source machine to the destination machine okay uh you know that in the on the sending side on the sending side in at the source machine the network layer it receives the data from transport layer okay when the data packet is received from transport layer the network layer attach its own header this is called encapsulation so on sending side the network layer encapsulates segment into datagram that is the network layer it adds its own header and this in header includes that uh, this packet is from which machine and it is moving toward which machine so it includes the network layer information okay so similarly on the receiving side when it is delivered it through the network to the destination machine then on the destination machine it uh, it deassociate it remove the header from the packet the network layer header and then the rest of the packet is delivered to the transport layer so on the receiving side the network layer it delivers the segment to the transport layer that on this receiving machine when it receive the data then it this data is is uh, is uh, delivered to the transport layer and you can know that the application layer and transport layer they are only present on the end system end system means routers servers where the user sets and use the app the internet okay so the application and transport layer they are only available on the on the at the host at the end system and the router the application and transport layer they are not running okay but the network layer it runs at the host as well as at all the routers so the network layer protocol it is present at every host and every routers you can see it that the network layer it is present in the routers as well as in the host okay at the routers what does what is its functionality of the routers basically at the routers when a packet is arrived the packet is checked okay that this packet is arrived from which machine and it is moving toward which machine based on this information it has a table okay that if i want if the uh, if the packet is moving toward this machine then the packet should be forwarded on this link it should be forwarded on this link so 
The router examines the header feed and all IP datagram passing through it. When a packet is arrived at the router, the router examines the IP headers and the router has a forwarding table and based on the uh, uh, information in the IP header and the forwarding table, the packet is forwarded to the next link to, over the next link toward the destination. So this is the functionality. You can see it through an example. Suppose this is the application layer. It sends the data to the network layer. Now the packet is moving through the routers and then the network layer delivers that data to the transport layer and then transport layer delivers that data to the application and the application layer delivers that data to the users. Okay. Now as I have told you that there are two key functionalities of uh, routers. Okay. Uh, there are two key uh, network layer functionalities. So the first one is that that the router it uh, first one is the routing. That is when a, when a, when a machine wants to move the data from source to destination. For example, in this example, you can see it when the data is to be moved from this machine to this machine. So the first thing is that to compute the best path toward the destination because there are multiple paths. So, so the network the house layer, it has to compute the best path. This is called routing. This is called routing. And when this path is computed, then the packet is moved on. Okay. So the first thing is that uh, first uh, 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 the first thing is that uh, the first thing is that routing that the network layer has to determine the route taken by packets from source to destination. So it has to compute the route that which route it will take. And this is the this is called routing algorithm. This is computed by routing algorithm. Okay. So after computing the best path then the packet is forwarded on that path. The packet is forwarded on that path. This is called forwarding. This is called forwarding. That is, it moves the packet from router input to appropriate router output. We can see it through an example. That, for example, when this, when the packet is to be moved from this house to to this uh, destination, so the packet it computes, for example, the path that it will take the path from like this one okay so when this path is computed then the packet is moved from how from the sending house to the first router when the first router receives the packet so it moves the packet toward the next router when this reduce receive the packet so it forward to this router not to this router so this is called forwarding this is called forwarding okay that is the packet is moved from one router to another router from another router to another router till it from the last router to the destination machine this is called forwarding okay so forwarding is the, so the network layer it has two functions forwarding and routing routing means to determine the route taken by a packet from source to destination. This is the function. This is called a routing algorithm. This is computed by a routing algorithm. And after computing the, uh, the route, then the packet is forwarded on that route. That is the packet is moved from one router to another router from a, far, from in, from a router input port to appropriate router port, port, router output port. Okay. So you can see that the analogy of the network layer can be explained through routing means that if you want to move from uh, Peshawar to Karachi, so you have different paths, different di different routes. So first you have to decide that on which route you want to move. So this is called routing, the process of planning trip from source to destination. And after you have done there's the planning that you want to take that route, then you start moving from on that route. Okay, so when you receive an interchange, so based on your best route, you move toward uh, the next uh, uh, interchange, the next uh, um, direction based on your best route. So forwarding is the process of getting through the single interchange. Okay. Now 
we are discussing that how the forwarding is performed and this is called the, the data plane okay in the data plane we have it is basically local that is when in a, when it uh, when a pack arrives at a router so the packet contains header information and this in header information it includes all the information there is uh, uh, that it that this packet is generated by which source and it is moving toward which destination okay so when this packet is arrived so this router it has a forwarding table okay it is a forwarding table so it based on this header information and forwarding information the packet is forwarded to the best route to the best route okay so the data plane it is local it is per router function that it is present in each router and what does it do the data plane it determine how data gram arriving on router input port is forwarded to the router output port the data plane function is that when a packet is arrived so it check the header information and based on this header information the packet is forwarded to the and the best link to the outgoing port this is called data plane so this is the forwarding functionality this is the forwarding functionality so what is the data plane it is local it is present in each router okay it is per router function and its functionality is that to determine how data gram arriving on a router input port is forwarded to the router output port that is when a packet is arrived so it examine the header information in the packet and based on header information the packet is forwarded to the next output port to the next link okay and this is also called forwarding functionality the next is control plane what is control plane it is basically network wide logic what does it mean it is basically that a control plane means that it compute the best route for example the routing algorithm it compute the best route from one machine to another machine so this is called control plane so it was it is network logic that is based on the logic of control plane the data plane works the data plane works that how when this packet is arrived so the data plane moves that packet to to the next output port now how this decision is taken by the data plane so this decision is taken by the data plane using the logic of control plane using the information of control plane so this control plane basically it dictate the data plane that how the data plane will work that how the data plane will forward the packet so it basically determine how datagram is routed among routers along into mean path that is you know when this packet is arrived on the router so there are three outgoing port 1 2 3 3 so why this packet is moved toward the two so this decision is basically determined that this out for this packet the out, the outgoing link two is best one this is basically determined by the control plane this is basically determined by the control plane this decision is taken by control plane okay so the data plane it forwards the packet based on the logic the input from the control plane so the control plane it is basically compute the route from source to destination on every routers so the data plane it is it is only one option that it is present in each routers okay it is local it is per router function but control plane we have two options the one is called traditional routing algorithm in traditional routing algorithm the routing or control plane is implemented in each router in each router the control plane is implemented in routers that is control plane is present in each router this is called traditional routing algorithm or traditional network and now we have uh, we have another architecture this is called software defined network and software ne defined network what does it mean that control plane for all the network devices it is implemented only at a remote server in a single entity in a centralized server we will discuss it okay so the network layer 
it has data plane and control plane the data plane functionality is to forward when a packet is arrived and a router it is forwarded to the next link this is called data plane so it is present in each router okay so the control plane it basically compute the best route for each router okay so uh, based on that route the packet when a uh, when a packet is arrived the, the data plane forward that packet to the next outgoing link okay so for control plane we have two approaches for data plane only one approach is that is it is present in each router but for control plane we have two approaches one is that it is called traditional routing algorithm that is the control plane is implemented in each router and one is called software defined network which means that the control plane is not implemented in router but it is implemented in a remote server in a centralized server okay now we are going to discuss per router control plane that is the traditional routing protocol so in traditional routing protocol the control plane is is per router implemented per router means that control plane is implemented in each router this router will have control plane this router will have control plane this this and this okay so when this router has a control plane so uh, so it computes the best route for, uh, for for this router if you want to move from this router to any machine in the internet so this router will have uh, to compute the best route to every destination to every host in the network okay so similarly this router and this router so per router control plane that is traditional routing protocol it means that the individual routing algorithm components in each and every router is present that is control plane is present in each and every router okay and the control plane of each router they interact with each other and then they uh, decide that which one is the best path so we will discuss it later on as well okay so you can see that the control plane is present in each and every router okay so i have discussed to you that what does control plane does the control plane actually builds this forwarding table this forwarding table that in this router if you receive a packet with the header 0100 0, 0100 so this packet for this packet the best route is to forward that packet to the link 3 this is the best route this is the best route okay so this forwarding table it is computed by control plane this is uh, this is implemented by this is computed by routing algorithm this is computed by control plane okay so this is uh, com computed based on uh, the control plane of this router it interacts with the control plane of other routers and then it builds up this table okay and when this table is built up so the data plane use this forwarding table when the packet is arrived for example 0 triple 1 so the data plane it looks for this header in the table in the local forwarding table for example this header it is 0 triple 1 so for this outgoing link is 2 so this packet is moved to 2 and how and who compute this forwarding table this forwarding table is computed by control plane of this router and this con the control plane of this router it interacts with the control plane of the rest of the router and then it computes this table this is called routing algorithm and this forwarding table is present in each and every router okay so this forwarding table that is computed it is computed by the control plane the routing algorithm of this router by interacting with the control plane of other routers with all other routers it it interacts and then it computes this table they it computes this table and then this table is used by the data plane okay so you can see that the per router control plane it is distributed in nature distributed in nature means that each router has control plane each router has control plane and then control these control plane interact with each other and then they build up the forwarding table in each router okay so this is distributed in nature okay so the routing algorithm in each router they interact with each other and then they build up their 
forwarding table okay so this is the control plane that is control plane interacts with each other the routing algorithm each uh, interacts with each other and then they compute the best route for each router computes its best route okay and then the best route are stored at the forwarding table this is the best route from for router this so this router will have different table because it has three lengths it has four lengths so uh, so it computes its own uh, best path based on its own knowledge uh, by interacting with the rest of the control plane so this is the control plane okay and uh, this is the data plane when this table is built up so when the packet is arrived so the data plane it examine the header field and this header field is then look up in the forwarding table and in the forwarding table it uh, for the, if the output port is 2 then the packet is forwarded to 2 if it is 1 then packet is forwarded to 1 okay so this is the functionality of data plane now the we have discussed that for control plane we have two alternative one was traditional routing protocol that we have discussed and now we are going to discuss the Another, pro uh, another approach this is called logically centralized control plane. What does it mean? That the control plane is not implemented in each router, but it is implemented in a server, in a centralized server. Okay. So a distinct, typically remote controller interact with the local control agents. Okay. That is, we will discuss it. For example, this is the uh, routers. So from this router, the control plane is uh is uh, uh, is uh, removed okay and it is implemented where it is implemented here at the remote controller centralized control this card centralized controller Be suppose this controller is running on a server it may run on one server it may run on multiple server okay so this centralized controller this is called controller so the control plane from all devices it is removed and it is implemented here in the remote controller okay so it means that this remote controller this control plane it is centralized the control plane here it will compute the best route for this router for this router for this router for this router okay and how it is computed basically these switches they are attached to the controller okay and we will discuss it okay so they are attached so they share the information to the remote controller and then the remote controller it has the uh, it computes the path for each router and the last slide if you do remember uh, that this router it has its own routing algorithm this router has its own routing algorithm this has its own routing algorithm so this was distributed in nature okay but here we will see that the control plane is only one control plane is only one this is the control plane okay this is the control plane and this control plane this routing algorithm it will compute the path for this router for this for this for this so you can see this is called centralized control plane logically centralized because this control plane this uh, can be implemented on one server or multiple servers suppose it is implemented on a laptop suppose okay so the route the control in the logically centralized control plane what does it mean that the control plane from each router it is not implemented in each router but the control plane is implemented in a centralized server on a centralized server and so this centralized server it it is attached to each router so it basically this centralized router it computes the routing uh, the routing algorithm or it executes the routing algorithm or it computes the best part for this router and it installs the uh, that, uh, that uh, path in its forwarding table then it computes the best part for this router for this for this for this so the, for all routers the path is computed by only one server okay so this is called centralized in this uh, forwarding table uh, you know that the forwarding table is computed by this remote controller by this centralized control plane for each router okay so you can see that the data plane is present in each router but the control plane is implemented in a centralized router 
okay but in the last uh, slide if you do remember uh, the the control plan was implemented in each router the control plan was implemented in each router the control plan was implemented in each rout uh, 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 router each router had its own routing algorithm okay but in the centralized you know that the uh, control plane is implemented uh, the data uh, the control plane is implemented in a one machine this is implemented in a one machine this is called centralized okay now we are going to discuss that what are the services that a network layer provides okay so you can see that for example when the the network what is the functionality of network layer so the network layer it basically forwards or it basically moves the data from source machine to destination machine so when it moves the data from source machine to destination machine so it can perform it can provide certain services for example it can guarantee delivery that when the data is delivered from source machine to destination it will be delivered must it will the packet loss will not happen the packet loss will not happen so this can be done similarly it can be also done that the data will be delivered it, the packet will not last and the packet will uh, will be delivered within 40 millisecond not more than 50 millisecond so it can also be guaranteed similarly uh, the network layer it can also provide the service that the packet will be delivered but they will be de delivered in order the packet will not be out order it will be delivered and it will be in order okay and secondly the data will be delivered must and providing minimum bandwidth for example that your data will be will be delivered guaranteed the data will be delivered guaranteed that the packet loss will not happen and your uh, your uh, you, your data will be forwarded by using a minimum bandwidth for example 2 MB the 2 MB will be provided on each router the 2 MB bandwidth will be provided on each router must similarly the data will be d delivered by providing security so this can be provided but you know that in the internet it is using best effort it doesn't provide guaranteed delivery that is the packet loss can happen in the internet it doesn't guarantee that the packet will be delivered within 40 millisecond now the packet can be delivered can take longer time the packets can we have already discussed the internet is using packet switching technology and packet switching technology we don't have guaranteed delivery the packet loss can happen we don't have 40 millisecond because one packet can move on one path and the another packet can move out uh, in another pair uh, another path so if it is if the packet is moved on the longer path it may take more uh, time longer time and the packet can be out of order okay and it also doesn't provide security okay so we are discussing the the internet that is only best effort but these services are also available and we will discuss it in the next slide so you know these are the network layer uh, architecture for example if you are using atm cbr service model cbr so in this atm uh, it is network layer and this it provides constant rate it uh, packet loss uh, it cannot it can provide that the packet loss will not happen that is the packet will be must delivered the packet will be delivered in order and the packet will be delivered within a particular time okay so but internet it is best effort it doesn't provide any bandwidth the okay so whatever the bandwidth is available that bandwidth will be utilized if there is no bandwidth available then the packet will wait in the queue and if the queue is full and the packet arrives the packet will last so the packet last is it doesn't provide guarantee of the packet last that no that uh, it doesn't provide guaranteed delivery the packet loss can happen the packet can be out of order the packet it doesn't provide any timing okay the packet may takes one hour two hours two seconds five milliseconds and so on okay so and the congestion can happen and we have discussed in the tcp protocol that the tcp uses the implicit congestion 
so basically the tcp infer the congestion through packet loss okay so we have discussed so these uh, they are just mentioned here in the table but we will not discuss these things at this architecture we will discuss only the internet that is the best effort model okay now we are coming so we have discussed uh, the generally the data plane control plane okay so what is the functionality of network layer and now we are going to discuss the router hardware inside the router what what is a router okay what are the components of router okay from physical point of view as well as from functionality point of view so you can see that what is a router we have already discussed it that a router what is its functionality when a router receive a packet that packet is forwarded toward a best link toward a best link so when the packet is arrived on a link that link or that port can be called input port that port can be called input port so these are input ports okay and now when the packet is arrived this is called input port the arrival of a packet on a port it is called input port when a packet is arrived then there is a routing processor it controls the whole router because any hardware it should be controlled through a processor <laughs> okay so when the packet is arrived the router uh, examines that okay the header field in the packet and based on header field in the forwarding table the packet is forward uh, uh, the router decide that okay this packet is arrived on this port and this packet should be forwarded to the this port okay so this when this decision is taken then the packet is moved from this input port to this output port so this is the functionality of switching fabric the switching fabrics it basically move the packet from when from input port to the output port okay so you can see that uh, a router it consists of input port and output port and routing processor that is how uh, when uh, it control the whole the functionality of whole router okay and what is the switching fabrics switching fabrics when the packet arrives at an input port and its output port is decided by a routing processor then the packet is moved from input to output port physically this physical movement of packet from input port to output port this is done through switching fabric okay so uh, a router it consists of input port it consists of output port it consists of a routing processor and it consists of switching fabric okay so we will discuss each one the this uh, this one as well as this one okay now basically uh, this is the routing management or control plane it is okay that it controls the whole the functionality of whole router okay and this is the data plane when the packet is arrived so how it decide that this packet is arrived so it should be moved to which router so this is basically as i have taken that when the packet is arrived the header information the packet is examined and as there is a forwarding table and it looks in the forwarding table and then the packet is forwarded so who build up this forwarding table this forwarding table is built up by routing algorithm by control plane okay and this you can see that the control plane is normally implemented in software okay so it operate in millisecond time this software are slow and this data plane these things it is basically implemented in hardware so it operates it is faster so it operates in nanosecond okay okay this is uh, so the data plane is normally implemented in the uh, router in hardware okay so it is very fast but this uh, uh, control plane it is uh, some uh, often implemented in the software so it operates in millisecond okay so <coughs> now you can see that uh, the routing processor basically when a packet is arrived okay so this is the physical layer this is the physical layer so physical layer perform its function so what is the functionality of physical layer it basically uh, convert the signal into data and then the data link layer so we will discuss it and then the data link layer 
passes the packet to the network layer so here the network layer examine the header okay so we can have a processor centralized processor that is one processor and it is controlling the whole uh, router all the input ports and we can have a routing processor in each uh, input port okay so this is called distributed okay so if we have processor in each port then it can be more efficient okay now we are going to examine input port functions okay so you can see that uh, uh, you can see that uh, this is the input uh, physical layer the line a termination okay so its function is there that it receives the signal that signal is converted into bit okay and this is the uh, link layer protocol after the physical layer the packet is passed through uh, to uh, data link layer so we will discuss it in the chapter number six and then the packet is uh, uh, forwarded to the network layer okay so here in the decentralized switching that I have already discussed that uh, in each input queue we have a whole functionality that is have its own memory it has its own processor okay so in this centralized switching each input port it has queue it has its uh, uh, routing algorithm uh, uh, routing processor okay so basically it use header fields in the packet and it look up the output port using forwarding table it has the forwarding table and then the if uh, based on that forwarding table the packet is uh, then it decide that the packet should be moved to which output port so the goal is to complete input port processing at line speed so why we do do it so that the uh, the this processing it should be done at the line that at which the packet are received so it should be so the rate at which the packets are received at that rate the this forwarding this functionality should be performed it should be performed if this functionality is slower as compared to the arrival rate if the packet are arriving for example two packet per second and it is for it is processing one packet per second so one packet will be will be restored in the queue and if this queue is become full then and, and the next packet arrive then the next packet will be dropped okay so its goal is that we have to complete the input port processing at line speed okay so if this speed of uh, lookup forwarding if the forwarding is slower and the packet arrival rate is higher then some packet will be stored in the queue and if the queue becomes a full then the packet will be discarded so the queuing if the datagram arrives faster than the forwarding rate that is uh, the packet it, uh, it, it decide and then it moves the packet to the output port if it is slower and the more packets are uh, in the packets rate the packets are arriving at higher rate then those packet will be stored in the queue and when this queue becomes the full full then the the uh, subsequent packet will be discarded okay so you know <coughs> normally this uh, forwarding a lookup it is for based on destination based forwarding destination based forwarding what does it mean that when a packet arrives so the packet has source ip it is that from which machine the packet has originated and it has destination ip it is that it is moving toward which destination so normally the destination based forwarding means that the forwarding decision is taken based on the destination ip address only okay so this is done in the traditional routing protocol that it forward packet based on only destination ip address but we can have generalized forwarding that is we can examine the source ip address and the destination ip address we can examine the source ip address destination ip address source port number destination port number so if you have uh, if we, uh, when you are uh, considering more fields in the forwarding in the lookup decision then it complexity increase the complexity increase so we will discuss the destination based forwarding okay so you can see that in, in input port when it it has when the packet arrives okay so it examine the header field and the header field is uh, is searched in the forwarding table and if the forwarding table entry is found 
then according to its outgoing link that which link is used by this entry so the packet is the outgoing port is determined and when the output port is determined that for example the packet has arrived on input port number one and the packet should be moved to port number four so this is when this is decided after this the packet is given to switching fa fabric because the switching fabric has to move the data from input port to physical output port so the switching fabric it will move the packet from input port one to output port four okay now we are going to discuss one important concept and before discussing the switching fabrics and output queue this is called longest prefix matching okay so longest prefix matching what does it mean okay so i would like to explain it through an example i would like to explain it through an example okay so then i think it will be clear to you